For the latest in strategic affairs, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell icon for updates. This is Stat News Global. I'm Amitabh Reddy. On the talking point, we have Vietnam's ambassador to India, Pham Tham Chau. Ambassador Chau, thank you so much for your time. I know it's extremely busy. But just wanted to get your overview on how important this is. I mean, you have 50 years of India-Vietnam ties, 30 years of India-ASEAN ties, and 10 years of India-Vietnam strategic partnership as well. What have the two countries achieved? The year 2022 is a very important year. As you mentioned, uh, two countries are celebrating the 50th anniversary of our diplomatic relations. But at the same time, in the context of India celebrating its 75 years of independence. And with ASEAN, we celebrate the 30 year of our relationship. In this context, the relations between India and Vietnam become more and more crucial. We can see from bilateral perspective as well as from multilateral perspective. If we see that relationship from bilateral perspective, we are very pleased to see it grow steadily. It goes without saying that the relationship has been excellent, cordial, since long. We have a civilizational and cultural linkages that span over 2,000 years. But since 50 years ago, we decided to uplift our consular relations to diplomatic relations, we decided to cover many areas. And especially uh, since uh, six years back, we decided to uplift to the comprehensive strategic partnership. We decided to cover all five areas, namely political, economic, defense, people to people, and scientific and uh, educational cooperation. We see all these areas, this is already a new, new development. I give you one example, each. For instance, in defense, uh, in political relationship, every year we have high-ranking visit. All top leaders of India have visited Vietnam, and in the previous government of Vietnam, all top leaders of Vietnam have visited India. That's number one. Number two, in terms of Defense, we have very strong cooperation in defense sector, which characterizes the mutual trust between our two countries. In trade, we have increased from only 200 million US dollar trade value in 2000, only 200 million. Yeah, now, now it's 12 billion, 13 billion. You see? In terms of people to people, as we are speaking, we are preparing for a direct flight. And it is the third direct flight within the uh, last four years during my tenure. And the number of visitors increased 40%. So if you teach, and there's, uh, in terms of investment, there's a new wave of Indian investment into Vietnam. So in every field, we have that. In terms of multilateral, Vietnam and India work very closely at the UN Security Council when we were a permanent member there. We work very much uh, in other area. In many uh, world affairs, we share similar position. And also in ASEAN, Vietnam has been considered as a pillar in act East policy pursued by India vis-a-vis -vis ASEAN. So we have so many things to celebrate. That's just the last point, if I can talk about multilateral relations, an important special meeting of the ASEAN foreign ministers. And as you said, it, it kind of it coincides with India's Act East uh, policy and the Indo-Pacific policy. What can we expect in terms of uh, concrete deliverables from that? Let me tell you this. ASEAN have more than eight uh, strategic partners and dialogue partners. But only India 
who can invite 10 head of ASEAN government and state to visit India nearly five years ago. And this is the second time only India can invite all 10 foreign ministers of ASEAN to go to India for the special meeting. It means that ASEAN give importance to the role played by India, acknowledge it important, its important positions in the current world situation, and it see its growing importance in world politics. Vice versa, also as India, of course, has many partners, you can name it, uh, from US, from China, Russia, European Union, Australia, Japan, quite everything, but also maintain a very good relations with ASEAN. And India underlies always the role of centrality played by ASEAN. And the two share many things together, especially in an open, inclusive, transparent, rule-based India, uh, Indo-Pacific. So that kind of things have cement our relationship. Of course, we are immediate and first neighbor of India, because Myanmar is your immediate neighbor. And the rest of ASEAN is your first neighbor. And India, in its foreign policy, emphasize on neighboring countries. Therefore, it is, is not enough, I think. It does not reflect the depth of the relations that ASEAN has with India. So then you talk about bilateral relations, and again, you were talking about high-level visits from both sides. We just had our Defense Minister Rajnath Singh visit, a uh, very successful visit. Could you highlight, uh, we know what happened there in terms of a vision document 2030 that again shows mm. focus, specifics in terms of 12 fast mm. patrol mm. craft, mm. the 100 million or the 500 million dollar mm. uh, credit line that has been given, mm. it's a logistics mm -hmm. agreement as well. Mm -hmm. So a whole lot of uh, agreements, if you could highlight each one of them. Yeah, I just, uh, let me highlight a number of characteristic of the deliverable and of the visit itself. Number one, we have never had any kind of cooperation in defense production of that scale with a country. And 12 high-speed boat is the first deliverable, but it paved the way for the next level of cooperation, namely the LOC of 500 million. We are finalizing it. And it's used now in Vietnam and is very much welcome. The second point is that very few countries, I would not say that, you cannot name it, we have logistic support. Because we follow the principle of four no. No align with any country, no taking part with on side to fight against the other side, no, allow, no join a uh, military allies, no letting uh, uh, another third country use its land, things like that. So the logistic support is a very big step forward. It's together with the participation in Milan recently, for the first time, by a Vietnamese Navy ship, testify to the growing convergence of strategic interest between Vietnam and, and India. And the next, another point I also want to stress is that the two sides decided to continue the defense policy forum of course, other countries, they have two plus two, yeah. things like that. But Vietnam and India, we have defense policy at the secretary level, vice minister level. So people, they come and they talk about important issues pertaining the bilateral relations, but also in the world. So it, it covers a lot of things. But I, tell, I, I also want to share two anecdotes that highlight the importance of the visit of uh, the Defense Minister Singh to Vietnam. Number one, normally not both leaders of Vietnam receive one ministers. In this case, both the 
president and the prime minister of Vietnam received him. Number two, if you observed, you see that my president saw him off at his car step and hurt him. So you see that is, we take him as brothers. There's no protocol. It reflects that we are in the same family. We trust each other very much. And of course, the, uh, the, the minister also went to Nha Chang uh, to see uh, the, the, the institution that received the grant from India about training, about digital. And this is open for many other opportunities of cooperation in defense. Those opportunities, Ambassador, what else can you tell us about what's in the pipeline? Remember when we last talked online, since then there have been a lot of developments. For example, in ASEAN, Philippines is the first country to sign a contract with India for the Brahmos. Mm -hmm. Vietnam, we've been hearing for a long time. What can you tell us about movement on that front? Uh, as I described, we have comprehensive strategic partners. And we don't have many that kind of partners in our foreign policy. So we include our cooperation in all fields. But we focus on training. We are very grateful for the precious support in area of training that the armed forces of India have provided to us, ranging from the army to the navy to the air forces. And the second area in terms of sharing information, analysis. The third area is with what we call joint exercise like Milan, which is also very important. The next step I think that India is very much interested in that we acknowledge is defense production cooperation. Yes, defense production, we have got this 100 LOC and we are going to finalize in order to implement the next 500 LOC. And in that next 500 LOC, we see a lot of elements. Also, I mean, we can be uh, also another batch of boats, things like that, high speed boats, and all the equipment as well. So our cooperation is comprehensive and inclusive. So I am very optimistic about the bright future of that cooperation. And I strongly believe that India-Vietnam relationship has been characterized by the prime importance of defense cooperation. You mentioned earlier, Ambassador, about trade and economics and how there was investment from India as well. And the figures change has been what you said, 12 to 14 billion now? Or is it now we, it's crossed 13.2 billion. And India has jumped from 10th position in our trading list to number eight. And that is very important for us. And not only in terms of trade, we are also uh, talking about other areas, especially in terms of investment and in terms of services. Services before, before tend to be ignored in our relations between India and Vietnam. But now it's become more and more important and become one element in that relationship. By services, I mean um, IT, medical. digital, medical, education, because the new development recently is that Vietnam is trying to accommodate uh, medical students from India, which cannot pursue their study either in Ukraine or in other countries. So we are working a mechanism to accommodate them in Vietnam. So this is a very nice development. Or we also have some interest by some major group to invest in Vietnam in the area of port, seaport, airport, also in terms of FACMA. So many things are coming up with a lot of promising prospects. There's also an exploration that Indian companies are carrying out in Oh, this is, uh, this is uh, it's very stable. It has been there since 2018. And ONGC is making profit, is very, uh, very pleased to enjoy it. 
and the government of India has asked our government to give extension to the contract of exploration. And that's uh, in principle during the visit to India by our president of the National Assembly. Vietnamese authorities have stated that we have given in principle that extension. Uh, now uh, the lower of, uh, uh, people will work on the term and condition of that. When you talk about multilateral cooperation, you mentioned the UN, of course, ASEAN itself. Now, there have been a new initiative that the US started uh, when the Quad meeting happened in Tokyo, the IPEF. Mm -hmm. and a majority of ASEAN nations are born. Fiji has mm -hmm. been, I think, 14 countries. What is Vietnam's position on the IPEF? Let, uh, let me uh, remind you that Vietnam is the most populous open economy in the world. We are the 14th most populous country in the world. India is number, I mean, number two. But we open our economy 200%. It means that our GDP uh, is only half of our total two-way trade. And in order to be able to sustain that open economy, we need to have a lot of free trade agreement or, or trade arrangement with other countries. And so far, we have 14 and 2 I in the pipeline. And we also would like to see India join RASEF. And since India could not join, we also, during the Vietnam chair, we tried to make a clause which allowed a let entry into the block by India. Now, with regard to the new initiative, in principle, we support that, uh, proceeding from our own interest of an open economy. And we will very much want to see, of course, it's, uh, it's still in the process of making, and we, uh, we need to look into the components, the elements, what is the pillar? It varies from trade to anti-corruption, things that we need to work on it because it's quite new. And it's uh, just the framework. It is not an agreement. It's not commercially binding, things like that. So we are working on it. But in principle, we are of any mechanism that is good for world trade, for prosperity of all our people. And it should be also, number one, open. Number two, inclusive. Number three, transparent. And number four, rule-based. And number five, respect the centrality of ASEAN. Because we always underline that important element. So now we are still looking on that. And we think that we will be able to give it more uh, consideration when things get clearer. We you talk about free, open, inclusive, uh Indo-Pacific. Another commonality between India and Vietnam is how uh, you have to deal with the problems of territorial or sovereignty with vis-a-vis -vis China. Mm. And you said when India and Vietnam's leaders meet, it's not just bilateral or multilateral talks, we talk about the situation around the world. Mm. What can you tell us about uh, positions on China's position? Uh, but you have a special partnership with China as yes, well. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, interestingly, uh, like India at the moment, uh, India position to what is happening now in Europe, Vietnam also have the similar approach. Vis-a-vis -vis China, China is a very important partner for Vietnam. According to our two categories, number one, we give importance to the major powers. China is a major power. Number two, we give priority to our immediate neighboring countries, and China is an immediate neighboring country. And number three, also like India, we share a lot of cultural similarities, uh, civilizational linkages with China. We are, we are chopstick uh, civilization, we eat rice, uh, many of us follow Buddhism and Confucianism, something like that. Having said that, I, I would like to stress that the relationship between Vietnam and China is very good and important for us. At the same time, we also have very good 
trusted relationship with India. Now, and it's our policy not to go with one country in order to fight another country. But we also have some issue, pending issue with China in South China Sea. That is obvious to everybody. It's, it's not between Vietnam and China, but between ASEAN and China. That's why we are working on the code of conduct. And in that area, at, in a, to a larger extent, in the ASEAN, uh, Indo-Pacific region, Vietnam is a view that we want to have an open, inclusive, transparent, rule-based Indo-Pacific, which does not impede the freedom of overflight and the freedom of navigation. Because this sea is very important for world commercial land. Therefore, we also work with other countries, not only with India, with any country who have interest in this region, not only in research region, but also in the peace and stability across the world to work together in order to make a clear message that this region should be a region of peace and stability and prosperity for all of us. But Vietnam will defend its territorial integrity. And of so course, yes, 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 yes. It's, our history have showed that. Ambassador, as usual, absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for giving us time. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the interview.